Hello everyone, welcome to Keep It Classy Tech. This video is going to be a settings video for the Sony X95K, which is their flagship 4K LCD for 2022. This video will cover how to set up the general settings as well as audio setup, and all of your SDR and HDR movie and TV settings, gaming settings, and Dolby Vision. So first thing you want to do is go into the general menu, you hit settings, on the TV and you go all the way to the left and you go to just where it says settings. So from there you can go into the picture settings from this menu like this, however there's an easier way to get to that so we'll come back. Um, so we're going to go down to screen. If you have a cable box or something that's not 4K you may be able to make adjustments there to your aspect ratios otherwise it's grayed out. So under sound is how you adjust how the TV speakers sound and if you're using the stand or wall mount. And then if you go to audio output, you can change between your TV speakers and external speakers. This is also where you can enable eARC, which if you have a modern soundbar or AV receiver, you would want to put that to auto, and then you would want to put pass-through mode to auto. That's how it will be able to pass through Dolby Atmos, DTS, and so on. All right, with the audio setup, we're going to go back in, and now we're going to do the HDMI ports. So you want to come here to external inputs and then go down to HDMI signal format. For HDMI 1 and 2, I suggest putting those to enhanced for most things, unless you have like an old DVD player. Port 3 is your eARC, so your soundbar or receiver is going to go to port 3, and then you can set that to either Dolby Vision or just regular enhanced to not have Dolby Vision. Port 4 is going to be your main gaming port, where you can pick between VRR or just enhanced. Enhanced will give you 4K 120 whereas VRR gives you 4K 120 with VRR. And VRR is for variable refresh rate. However, when VRR is enabled, local dimming gets disabled, which means the image would look like this in dark areas, so it is not recommended. I recommend just leaving it in enhanced so you get 4K 120 and not having VRR, because then your image could look more like this if your local dimming is turned on to either medium or high. If an update comes out later that will allow local dimming with VRR, then feel free to use it. Alright, now we're going to move on to your basic SDR movie and TV settings. So we're going to use the custom picture mode. Now for the brightness, you need to set this to your room, but the lower that you can set it and be happy, the better your blacks are going to be. For gamma, you're either going to use negative 2 or negative 1 for your main movie watching mode that we're working on right now. and then. Black Adjust and Contrast Enhancer are preference options. Those are up to you, but I don't recommend them. Local Dimming should be at Medium and Peak Luminance turned off. Under Color, you want this to be left alone where it's at Expert 1. Some people do like to use Live Color, so that is up to you. Under Clarity, Sharpness leave it at 50. And Reality Creation, I like to use Auto. And again, you can set it how you like. The Noise Reductions, I also leave at Auto. And Smooth Gradation, I leave it low. Under motion, this is also personal preference, however I recommend having Cinemotion on low and then smoothness either at min or at 1. Clearness is black frame insertion and most people would not like to use that. Now for a bright room mode, you can unlock two extra modes, these custom for Pro 1 and Pro 2, I have a previous video on how to do that, or you can just use cinema or standard or one of the other picture modes. For this one, we can put gamma at zero and turn the brightness up a little bit. Most of the other settings will still be the same. Uh, peak luminance you can turn up depending on how bright you need it to be, depending on how bright your room is. Um, this could also be your sports mode, so just set it to what looks good to you for your room during the day. And again, we want to leave it an expert one, live color off unless you like live color, sharpness at 50, reality creation again at auto. Uh, or you can just leave it at 20, their auto and 20 are pretty similar. Uh, noise reductions, auto, smooth gradation, low. Motion, you know, this is separate from the other mode, so if you're watching sports on this mode and you want to turn smoothness up a little bit higher, go right ahead. This is all up to you, but you can see here with clearness how it gets darker um, from the black frame insertion. So, you know, that's a personal preference. It does add motion resolution, but it does dim the screen and can cause flicker. Again, Cinemotion low for most content, um, high for some, but for the most part you can leave it at low and you'll be good. Alright, I'm going to touch on Dolby Vision. With this particular Sony TV, we really don't need Dolby Vision Bright. You can use dark and it looks good. 
So what we're going to do is just use Dolby Dark. You want HDR tone mapping to stay off. Local dimming, if you put it to high, it will help with blooming and subtitles, but it will lower the overall brightness. So more detail and brightness with medium, less blooming with high. Color, leave it default with Expert One. You will notice a slight green shift with Dolby Vision Dark. It does change the white point and it is a little green. Again, reality creation can be at auto. And then our noise reductions, you don't really need for Dolby Vision content. Smooth gradation can stay at low. Motion, again, this is up to you. Either min or one on smoothness is the recommendation. And then Cinemotion on low. And then that's all you really need to do for Dolby Vision. If you want an even brighter mid-tone Dolby Vision, you can use bright uh, and then put all the other settings the same. All right, now in HDR10, we're gonna use custom again and most of these settings are going to be automatic. So if you already did your custom picture mode for SDR, everything in HDR will be the same, except it will push your peak brightness to high, the brightness to max. Uh, so that means all your clarity and motion settings are shared between SDR and HDR. But you may want to just go through and check, and you will have to do this for every single input on the TV. There is no copy to all inputs. And that also includes the two versions of apps. You'll notice when you go to built-in apps that some will say apps and some will say apps video. So that basically counts as two inputs for the built-in apps plus your four HDMI ports. So you will have to do SDR, HDR, Dolby Vision on all of them. But once you're done, you're done. All right, now for gaming, contrast at 90, peak luminance, turn it down, and again, if you want better blacks, then turn the brightness down. This is going to be completely up to you um, in your room. However, again, in SDR, the darker you make it, the better your black level is going to be. Uh, I would recommend putting it where that line is on 35 and having the peak luminance off if you can play at that level of brightness, which is still very bright. Then we're going to go down and reality creation. You can still have auto smooth gradation set to medium because again, HDR shares the same settings. So we want medium with HDR 120 Hertz games. All right, so now with the clearness in gaming, that black frame insertion can be good for SDR gaming. And if you do want to use it, you can turn up the peak luminance and the brightness to overcome the brightness drop. Uh, again, this is up to you. However, in HDR, you do not want to have black frame insertion as it does lower your HDR brightness. So again, I would just recommend leaving all the motion settings off in game mode. And now we're going to do game HDR, where just like with uh, custom mode, it's pretty much the same settings. It's just going to boost your brightness up to max. It'll put your peak luminance on high and everything else will end up being the same. And with gaming, a lot of people really like to use live color. So if that's you, try it out. It will saturate your colors a bit more. Uh, it is not an accurate setting, it's a preference setting. So again, I do not recommend black frame insertion clearness setting uh, in HDR games as it will dim them a lot. However, smoothness at medium really helps with cleaning out posterization in HDR games at 4K 120. Now, when you are setting up the HGIG on the Xbox or PlayStation, you want to disable the HDR tone mapping first and then you do what it says and you turn up the brightness until the squares go away or on the PlayStation it would be the sun. All right so on the 75 inch model that I have that resulted in a max tone map luminance of 1700 nits and a max full frame tone map luminance of 800 nits. On the Xbox if you pull both triggers and bumpers at the same time it will show you the number values in the top right. On both Xbox and PlayStation for the minimum, you want to have those all the way dark to zero so that the game will actually send a true zero black. And that's it. Your X95K is now fully set up and ready for use. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like these kind of videos, I will have setting videos for just about every model that comes out every year, as well as reviews. So if you aren't subscribed, subscribe, and you will be able to see those videos in the future. Thank you, and have a good one.